Toronto Audio Fest 2022. Yes, I decided to go to the Toronto Audio Fest 2022. I got to meet a lot of you and take a lot of pictures, handshakes. So thank you for showing me a great time. I honestly go to shows to really socialize with people, and you know, meet new people. But you know, assessing rooms—that's something I don't really do because again, you're in a new environment. How you're gonna assess gear? It's impossible. So I'm just gonna tell you what I heard from each room, and I'm gonna tell you. What I found, I'm going to pick the best sounding room that I found at the show, but it doesn't really speak to the actual performance of each gear. That's impossible. So keep that in mind. So first off, I want to introduce you to the Triart Room. So Triart is an interesting company. It's based in Canada, and they are a primarily a art paint company. Now they make their audio gear stuff out of bamboo a lot, and I actually op-、uh, reviewed their open baffle speakers made out of bamboo not too long ago, about two three years ago. Now this time around, they're introducing this a horn speaker. Now these are interesting speakers, and there's many parts to it, and that, I mean that quite literally. First off, the top portion is actually a mini bookshelf speaker, and the bottom portion is a stand with a subwoofer built in, and you can buy that separately and use it with any other speakers and whatnot. But if you decide to add horns to it, now you have a conical horn design, conical horn loaded bass, and a conical. Horn on the top as well. So this was interesting to me because this is something that I haven't really seen before, where you add horns to an existing speaker, like a mini bookshelf speaker. And from the way Triart explained it, they really like the sound of their mini monitor, and they just wanted to make it louder without kind of straining, because it is operating on a single driver. So I thought that was very smart, naturally amplifying using conical horns. And the choice of using conical horn was because they wanted to make it as colorless as possible. They, all they wanted to do was make the mini bookshelf speaker they have and the qualities it has, and just project it into the room. And so I thought that was quite interesting. In my opinion, however, it did definitely color the sound. In a positive way, when you added the horns, at least in my opinion, it definitely added that horn magic. Definitely, the high frequency and the mid range was just a little bit more bloomed, and the bass was much more linear. So definitely, I heard coloration, but again, in a good way. Now, bamboo, which is the primary material they use in all of their gear, is really a good material of choice when it comes to acoustic designs. It has really good acoustic properties. So again, it looks great. This is like basically plain bamboo, and they already look fantastic in my opinion. So the look factor is definitely a plus for me, and the price of a conical horn is usually fairly expensive. And this is what really got me. The price for these are seven thousand. Two hundred dollars, approximately, and that's for the horn. That's for everything that you see in this video, the speakers, not the gear. Now, another thing that is interesting is the top portion that has these divots or jelly beans, as the triart guy called it. Jelly beans, interesting. And what this essentially is is diffusion, in my opinion. It just makes things diffuse and sound more linear, sound more smooth, and honestly. I haven't seen this kind of design design in a conical horn or any horn design before. Having diffusion inside the conical horn, I thought that was very smart and very innovative. Something that I haven't seen before, so I got excited. So I took them and I'm reviewing them. I have them here. I stole them from the show, and I will be sharing my experience with you guys shortly on this channel. Now, next room was Lee Song Canada and Galion. Now. If you know Galion, Galion is Thomas and Stereo, dear friend of mine and a YouTuber also.、Uh, his new brand and his new brand's tube amplifier, the Galion, was a masterpiece in that room, in my opinion. And they also had the deckware again, the ZMA that I reviewed. But oh my god, both were quite amazing. I think the Galion really has that dynamic going for it. I mean, I was hearing open baffle speakers that Lee Song had in there, which again amazed me with the combination they had with Galion and Deckware because the bass was punching. 
Now, personally for me, they were a little bit even too much for that room. Like the bass was really, really present. So I really liked that room. It sounded great, but the bass just didn't do any favors in terms of how, how much it had in that room. It's a little bit more than what I liked, but man, if you thought open baffles couldn't create bass, geez, you gotta hear, you, you, I mean, and there are many of you there, so you can attest in the comment section. The bass was slamming, punching, and it was crushing it. And for those of you that are saying, well, tube amplifiers and open baffle speakers can't do that, you're wrong. You have to hear this. It was insane. And honestly, one of the better sounding rooms at the audio show, it was, it was just so dynamic, yet nuanced and present. It was a room to behold and definitely Thomas should be proud, Lisa on Canada should be proud because this room sounded and looked magnificent in my opinion. And that's probably why there were so many people. I couldn't get the sweet spot until much later. Now, next room is Magnapan. Now, Wendell from Magnapan was doing this presentation with the new LRS Plus. Now, the LRS Plus, is an interesting speaker. It's very transparent, it's very, it's, it's built upon the LRS and it is supposed to be better than the LRS. Now I didn't compare LRS side by side, but I did get to hear the LRS Plus and it sounded pretty darn good. Now, here's the catch, get ready to be mind blown. Now there is going to be some spoilers here if you're gonna visit some audio shows. So skip over this part if you decide that you wanna keep it a surprise, but I have to talk about it because it was crazy. So he plays, just normal music, right? And everyone in the room is thinking, wow, that sounds pretty good. The LRS Plus sounds pretty darn good. And then he reveals the fact that one of the amplifier, one of the shit amplifier is off. So where, and, and the top amplifier is actually the ones that's powering the LRS Plus. So what was playing? Well, it turns out it was their new subwoofers. It is that black thing in the corner that is squished away, that is triangular. <laughs> and, and it was mind blowing. And Wendo explained the concept here and it was quite interesting. Wendo explained that, you know, the subwoofer technically should be able to play all of the frequency equally as good as a panel speaker to pass as a good subwoofer for a very speedy dynamic speaker like a panel speaker like MagnaPan. And I thought that makes perfect sense. Because if you want to blend the speakers perfectly, then the subwoofer should be capable of doing everything well. Now, I have to admit, it didn't trick me that much because I was thinking the high frequency on these are a little bit rolled off in comparison to the LRS that I know. But that's because I've heard LRS a lot of times. I own one. It is a magnificent speaker and I know it like the back of my hand. And I'm sure a lot of Maggie owners would have thought the same thing if they heard what they heard. But honestly, rest of it, the bass to mid range was fantastic. And as far as I'm concerned, crossing over the MagnaPan with that triangular new sub, I think will be the best choice and perhaps even better than pairing up with, you know, subwoofers that I recommended in the past, like rel subwoofers, because this is just gonna be a dipole design. It's a dipole subwoofer. So the idea here is that the subwoofer is firing forward, backwards, everywhere, just like a panel speaker. And hence, perfect blending, perfect power response, and so on. So I thought that was very interesting and a very exciting presentation that you really don't see much happening at audio shows, but here I was and I enjoyed it fully. And if all that confuses you, no worries. All you have to know is that MagnaPan is coming up with a subwoofer, yes. And for those of you that don't get it for years, Maggie owners have been asking for it. Now, the next room is Angela Young, Gilbert Young. Now, Gilbert Young is the engineer that used to run Blue Circle, the owner of Blue Circle. Now, I used to own a lot of his products. He made amplifiers, preamplifiers, stacks, you name it, power conditioners and everything. Now, you see a set of fine audios here, which are speakers that are very nice, but the real gem is in the middle. Now, what is happening in the middle there? That is the crazy part. So he has this prototype amplifier and he's plugging in these wire uh, cables to increase capacitance. And what he's doing there is to test where the diminishing return starts with capac capacitance. Cause you know, we've, we've seen it in the Hegel H30A, we've seen in many power amplifiers, you know, more filtration, more filtration. So how much filtration is enough? 
was what he was testing out. And interestingly enough, every time he increased the capacitance and we, we, we eventually ran out, we heard a difference each time. Mainly for me, I heard it sound more smooth, more refined on the top frequency, a little bit more of sound staging. And in that room, hearing that kind of difference made me question what I would hear in my personal space that I know very well and a very good learning experience for me. So thank you, Gilbert Young. And moving on, Alta Audio. Now Alta Audio is a room to behold. Now I thought this was one of the better sounding rooms, honestly. They were running these new Alta Audio speakers. And the interesting thing about these speakers is that they're kind of open baffle. Well, not kind of, they are open baffle. They have this mesh in the back to make it appear a little bit more in line with the bottom portion, but the bottom portion is a subwoofer and the top portion is an open baffle. And all this was being run by Saturn Audio stuff. Now Saturn Audio is also Gilbert Young's design, but also a very good design. I actually use their power conditioners right now. And I've been using it for the past year or so and I love, absolutely love it. So review for that is coming out, but they make other stuff like amplifiers, preamplifiers and so on. And they're all very excellent. And it sounded wonderful in that room with the pair of Alta audio speakers that I was listening to. Very full bass response, very silky and engaging mid-range, emotional high frequency was just, just right for me. And that room I know very well because I used to actually exhibit uh, in that room and that room can get pretty messy really quickly, but that, I mean, it, they handled it really, really well in that room. I think they set it up right and it sounded really good with those speakers in that room with the Saturn Audio stuff as well. Everything just worked very, fairly well. The only complaint I would have is that the bass in certain seating spots would be a little bit too boomy but that's more of the room. And I know that because I was in that room four years ago, sweating my ass off. Now, another thing cool about this room is that I met a harpist and I love meeting people that play these wonderful instruments. I mean, Vincent Belanger is one, but this lady here, which I dare not try to pronounce her name. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just not gonna try, but I'll learn eventually. She, it was just mesmerizing and she was actually playing along with the speakers and that just showed how natural the speakers were sounding, but also her skills. Cause that's something that's pretty hard to do for even veterans, right? You have to really know your music, really know what you're doing to pace with the speakers. And really it, it just mesmerized me. In fact, I bought both the LP and the CD right off the spot because I was just so happy with what I'm what, what I was hearing. She also sings and she's an amazing singer. She sings and plays a harp. What could you ask for more? Buy her music. And you know I'm serious when I say buy it because I never ask my viewers to buy anything. But this worth buying. So the next room is Dali and NAD. And they were showcasing the Downley Core speakers, their flagship $150,000 speakers. Now this is the first time they were ever sh showcasing it at a show or actually playing it at a show. They actually showcased it in some other show, but they told me that it's the first time they're actually playing it. And it sounded magnificent. I mean, the bass was pounding. I mean, the, the look of the speakers, how tall it is, how magnificent, the, everything, detail, retrieval, sound staging, imaging, it was all fairly great, but it really didn't, you know, wow me $150,000 worth much. And that's definitely, that's the room as well, but also the room was fairly big and they were, you know, trying to play this thing loud. In my opinion, it was too loud and the meters were clipping a lot of the times. I mean, they were running with NAD mall blocks, but you can see the meter clipping but they will just keep on going. So I hope, I wish that they brought the volume level down a little bit. That was a little bit of a disappointment for me, but it wasn't the best sounding room, but it was definitely up there. And it definitely should be because it's $150,000 speakers, but definitely I can do for sure. And right next to the Downley's room was the Accor Acoustics and Hegel's room. Now this room was interesting because of course the Hegel H30A they are playing right now in that room was the exact same unit that I reviewed at my place because I sent it over to the show. Now the Accor acoustic speakers are granite speakers. They're made of full granite. I mean, it is a very sturdy speaker and it is a nice looking speaker in my opinion as well. Using quality drivers, quality crossover. And I have to say though, I believe it uses beryllium dome tweeters, metal dome tweeters. 
and I really wasn't a fan of the Aquora acoustic sound before. Now I heard that they made a little bit of a tweak and adjustment to the crossover as well as the cabinet material, uh, a little bit of change to kind of bring down that height a little bit and kind of make that more refined. Uh, I, don't know, I don't know the exact changes they did, but whatever they did, they did it right in my opinion because that room sounded so good in my opinion. Uh, definitely top three, easy, easily top three. I mean, that room was huge and these were pounding, detail, everything you could ask for, but it was also a very well carpeted room. Perhaps that's why I liked it so much, but with the Hegel H30A, that room sounded really, really good. But a little bit of a disappointment, I didn't see the preamplifier being used, the P30A with the H30A, which I thought would be the right choice. Maybe I'm wrong, maybe they did, but I just, regardless, it sounded great. Now moving on, the next room, Proac. Now this room seriously wins the best looking speaker award at the show. I mean, I love the finish on these speakers. It's just magnificent looking. Now, of course, they weren't pounding bass. In fact, they were, you know, they were quite nuanced and mid-range oriented, in my opinion, in that room. But the room size and that speaker it just worked perfectly, in my opinion. It sounded beautiful, it sounded majestic, and sounded really full and wide and deep and really sparkly. But of course, you're not gonna get that deep bass extension like your core acoustic room or the Dalys room. So a little bit of a different experience, but just by the looks of the speakers, it's worth a million dollars. I mean, I didn't even bother asking the price because it was so gorgeous, just take my money. Now the next room was Joseph Audio and Hi-Fi Rose. Now Joseph Audio is a speaker that I know very well. Um, I've heard it before, I've experienced it before, so I'll keep it short. It sounds amazing. I mean, in that room, it sounded pretty darn full for such a small speaker in that room. Deep sound stage, really nice bass authority and warmth to the sound. Of course, it's not gonna go down to 20 hertz or 30 hertz for that matter, but it was nuanced, detailed. It sounded really, really good. Now the imaging was a little bit iffy, like the center imaging, the side imaging was great, but the center imaging was a little bit iffy and that could be the stand in the middle, which was obviously showcasing these beautiful new Hi-Fi Rose integrated amplifier. Do you see me drooling? Mm-hmm. Yeah, just absolutely magnificent looking with the meters, the dials, and just, oh, is this real? I think it's the dream because I imagined this in my dream and Hi-Fi Rose made it. I wish to review it one day, but we'll keep it at that. I don't want to drool all over my laptop here. So moving on, Steinheim, Nordost, and Dart Zero Room. Now, Steinheim is a speaker that I wasn't really a big fan of in the previous shows. Like I've been to shows and I've heard Steinheim at shows and I was never impressed by any Steinheim speakers in any room. But in this room, Oh my God, it was running Dart Seal, which is a company that I've heard of before, but haven't really you know, interested me in the past. But running it with Dart Seal and all these tweaks, I mean, there was a lot of tweaks in this room. I mean, it was a pretty small room, but they had some acoustic panels. Everything was very well taken care of. I mean, the cables probably cost more than the speakers. Everything was isolated, Nordos, you know, tweaks and stuff. So by far the most tweaks in a room award goes to this room for sure. But it sounded amazing. Like everything just sounded really coherent. I got the sweet spot for about 30 minutes and we were rocking out different types of music, rock, you know, older, old music, you know, newer music and just crazy stuff. But it sounded magnificent. And even in a small space like that, I just found it to be intimate yet deep in soundstage, wide in soundstage and it was one of the best rooms that I heard at the show. Now moving on, the next room is Mer Audio. Now I've seen Mer Audio many times, Toronto Audio Fest, Montreal Audio Fest, you name it. And every single time I see these speakers, it just makes me wonder who woke up one day and decided to go, okay, hybrid, this is how we're gonna do it. We're gonna add two offers on the top, two offers on the bottom, electric, electrostatic panel in the middle. It's just a, such an interesting design. It's kind of curved too. Really interesting looking speakers and they are transparent. They're really nice. I wouldn't say they're full range, but they have great bass uh, presence. 
And overall, it was a good impression, but I also thought the room was holding it back a lot. I'm not sure if it's the components or the room or a combination, but it, it wasn't the best sounding room in my opinion, and I really thought it had a lot more potential. But if panel speakers and electrostatic speakers are your thing, definitely worth checking out more audio. Now moving on, Surin Vega. Now Surin Vega, I mean, where do I start? Surin Vega is an interesting speakers. I mean, they're fairly inexpensive speakers for the size of speakers you're getting and they pound. I mean, if you're a bass lover, if that's your thing, you wanna rock out, be a kid again, or you are a kid, whatever, <laughs> then these are it. I mean, they sounded pretty crazy in that room. It was a pretty small room too, so maybe that's why, but I found the high frequency to be quite a little bit brittle in the, in, the, in the top end, not as refined as some of the other rooms, but for the price, I mean, these speakers, I believe, are less than $1,000 each, which was incredible in my opinion. I mean, for the price, surprised me. So I might check out Surin Vega in the future on my channel because that was pretty impressive. The next room is Illumina. Now Illumina is interesting because these are weird, man. I mean, how else do I wanna put it? They look high-end, they look nice, but they're kind, they have this like tweeters and then they have this, you know, woofer or driver thing here and you can see it vibrating. It's very interesting design. I believe it is a dipole design. But I've never heard of this brand before. I've seen it in pictures, but it's my first time hearing it. It was very delicate sounding, nuanced, sound coming from everywhere. But again, I just thought that the music they were playing and the room, it could have been better. They were also running tube amplifiers and some really nice gear. The turntable was what really mesmerized me because I know that turntable very well. Uh, I believe it's by John Nettes. I'm butchering the name probably but really good heavy duty turntables, um, Lenko design. Essentially, he takes these Lenko idler turntables and then mass load it. Now mass loading idler turntable is something that has been done. It's not just him that does it, but in my opinion, he does it the best. It's beautiful, it's a masterpiece, and there's a lot more modifications that he does to the turntable that makes it sound wonderful. So if you're in for a one, -on one piece masterpiece, like one of a kind, then he's the guy to go to, in my opinion, for mass loaded Lenko turntables. Now the next few rooms are gonna be brief because I've heard them many times at shows, and I've seen them many times at shows, so I'm gonna keep it brief as possible. So for Cal. Focal is a company that you know we know all very well, and they were uh, demonstrating with Musical Fidelity and also their uh, speakers here. And really, uh, I don't find higher end Focal's as bright. Uh, they're very detailed, nuanced, with great bass authority. It gives you that wow factor, and, and it definitely has that show quality sound going for it. I absolutely love the room they were in. It was the perfect size for the speakers, and it really imaged well, great separation, and really displayed well what Focal's are capable of while not showing the exact full potential, but still a good representation of what they're capable of, in my opinion. So overall, a good room for sure. Now the next room was Win Audio. Now Win Audio has been in shows in Montreal and Audio Fest uh, many times. So I'm not gonna talk too much about it, but this was probably the most expensive room, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, I could be wrong, but I think they're, they're up there definitely. Uh, their speakers were beautiful. I mean, they're very big, full range in my opinion. Uh, very deep. They were playing some really nice orchestral and classical music in there, as they always do. And uh, I, I just have to wonder, like, what would acoustic music or rock sound in that kind of system? I mean, the gear itself, the rack itself was full. I'm not sure if everything was hooked up or just to showcase it, but it looked magnificent. And I absolutely loved just staying in that room. Everything was very delicate, detailed, and it was one of the best sounding rooms, according to uh, my friend's opinion. Personally, for me, what I especially liked about this system was it was nuanced, it was detailed, it had all those you know, details without being in your face like a lot of the higher end systems do at times to wow you. Uh, it didn't really do that. It was pretty balanced overall and it really you had to really sit there for a while to understand what the speakers and the system was doing and that nuance and detail would come at you but not in an aggressive fashion. So I enjoy the musicality of that room for sure. Now next up is Gershman Acoustics, and I have to say they are very diligent at being at shows. I mean, I think they went to like every show they possibly can. And rightfully so, people deserve to hear Gershman Acoustics, they're great speakers. And they were being run by these really high-end stuff. I mean, the, the gear I'm not really familiar with, they're really gigantic, and I 
was really wowed by the presentation overall. If you remember, I actually reviewed these Gershwin's acoustic speakers and in my room, it had more bass presence and more full bodiness to it that I really didn't find in this particular room and setup. But what I did like was that it was way more linear and balanced and detailed and more neutral overall, um, even though it had great full extension still without kind of being over bloated. In my room, the bass was really shaking the room, like I said, the foundation of my room. Whereas in this room, it was more balanced, more neutral, more relaxed. So I did enjoy the overall presentation of these speakers in this room. And as always, Gershman's do excellent job setting up their speakers in every show. Now the next room was PMC and they were displaying these large speakers with AccuFace. And when I was listening to uh, these PMC speakers, and I've heard other PMC speakers too, but the mid-range is very captivating. And if you like the tonality of the PMC speakers and what their drivers are capable of, uh, it's really hard to pass by. PMC has this typical sound that you just gravitate towards if you like that sound, there's no looking further. And I've seen that with many of uh, past clients of mine as well. Some of them are just avid PMC fans. Now, this was really interesting to me because of how high the tweeter and the mid-range were. In fact, in my sitting spot at the show, the sound staging was like up here. Like it was really up there and look, it, it seemed like I was looking up at the stage instead of in front of me. And some people really enjoy that kind of presentation. For me, I, I crave a little bit more intimacy. Like if I want to listen to my music, I want the singer to be right in front of me and the instruments to the side and kind of like as if they're in my room, not looking up at the stage. Uh, Cause I don't really feel like I'm sitting down and looking up at the stage. That's kind of weird to me, but some people enjoy that because it's more realistic to them that they're uh, you know, hearing it a little bit up. So the imaging is a little bit up. So sound staging is a little bit up, but like overall the bass authority, the mid range, like I said, was very captivating and a very good room for sure. Now Coherent Audio has this dual concentric design. They also have a super tweeter on the design as well. And in my opinion, I've heard like many Coherent models, not in my room, but at my friends, many of my friends own it. And usually it's the Tannoy fans that kind of gravitate towards the Coherent Audio sound. And I have to agree, it has that really magic going for it. Really nice sound stage, really that kind of almost vintage and modern cross sound and with the pairing of Alnick Audio, which again, one of my favorite brands when it comes to tube amplifiers in the high-end category, it was just magnificent. I do feel like the room was holding it back a lot uh, because I heard Korean Audio in my friend's places and they're just magnificent, really wide sound stage, really deep, holographic everywhere. Uh, and that is with modest tube gear, far as I'm concerned, compared to Alnick. And in this room, it, it did hold them back a lot. In my opinion, I think there's much more potential, but yeah, definitely check them out if you're into that dual concentric design. Not to mention the fact that the Alnick tube amplifiers were equipped with these Emission Lab 300B tubes, which Emission Labs really make really good tubes. They're, they're famous for their mesh design and really they are one of the best, if not the best in my opinion, when it comes to 300B designs and other tubes as well. Um, even in comparison to like the legendary Western Electric vintage new old stock tube, I found that the Emission Labs really simply win in terms of detail, retrieval, nuance, and everything like that. So really good pairing right here. Like this is a, this is something that I would like to have in my personal system. Let me just put it at that. Now the next room is Rebel and Mark Levinson and under the same branch now, under the same company, Harman Kardon. Now I felt like the speakers were a little bit too clustered and too close to each other, but I can't really speak for the sound it was creating because I didn't get to hear this room. They weren't playing any music when I got there and I chatted with the guys and had a good time, but hopefully I'll get to hear a system like this later on, but I, I didn't, I don't have any comments in terms of sound, but Looking at it, it looked pretty impressive and I, I, I'm sure it was a great sound they were producing there. Now the last room I'll cover is Charisma Audio, Herrick and Kinky Studio. Uh, so the Kinky Studio and Herrick was the sponsor of this uh, room, I suppose, but the, the Charisma Audio is the vendor for it. But the uh, speakers, Herrick Audio, very interesting speakers. They were kind of like really low on the floor and I believe they are dual concentric design, much like Korean Audio, Tannoy and so on. Uh, but they're really nice, like they're, I believe they're plywood. Um, they're really nice looking speakers in my opinion, especially if you're into that vintage vibe and a sound that is a bit of a cross between modern and kind of vintage as well. I wouldn't say that it was the best sounding in that room or it was an accurate representation because it didn't honestly sound as good as I thought it would in that room, especially because I'm familiar with Kinky Studio gear. I thought it wasn't really pulling much uh, of the 
benefits of Kinky Studio in that room. So again, I'm not sure how to feel about this speaker. It was my, it was my first time hearing these speakers and maybe hopefully in the future, I get to hear it myself in my room. But as far as I'm concerned in this room, it didn't sound as good as I thought it would. Now quickly, Charisma Audio has um, also their own brand and they make their own turntables as well, as well as uh, well-tempered turn turntables. And Bernard from Charisma Audio, the owner of Charisma Audio, is someone to go to if you're in for a turntable or analog setup because he's very experienced and he's a very professional guy. And I highly recommend him if you're looking for a turntable setup. In fact, on many occasions, I use his service to set up my turntable professionally as well as buying turntables from him. Now on the last note here, Kinky Studio was displaying the internals with this kind of like acrylic top. Um, on one of the Kinky Studio preamplifiers or integrated amplifiers. I think it's the XM1 Plus, I believe. Uh, I didn't really look at the model, but anyways, I think this is what they need to do because I wanna look at the internals. I thought that was a really clever and nice display. And I wish they made that available commercially because I would definitely opt in for that than a metal top cover. But that's just personal geek thing from me. Now, it's time to choose the best sounding room that I found. Now, personally for me, finding the best sounding room at audio shows are fairly easy because one room stands out. Usually it sounds all mediocre and one room stands out. And at the Montreal Audio Fest, that room was PS Audio for me um, and maybe Central Hi-Fi as well. But here, I found many rooms that I liked, even though I noticed that it wasn't showing the full capabilities of the system as well. But I found that it sounded pretty good this year. But without further ado, the winner is Alta Audio. Now, I found this room to be very coherent, very good sounding overall. And what really got me was the musician, uh, again, the harpist playing with the speakers. It was just magnificent. I absolutely loved that presentation so much. And I think it's the longest time I've spent in a room. Um, and I have to say the runner up and very close second was the Nordos and Steinheim room and the Dart Seal, of course. And that room again, many tweaks. I don't know what was going on, but Steinheim went from not interested for me to wow. I absolutely love the presentation I'm hearing. So again, it really depends on the room, the setup and all that kind of stuff. So I'm just picking the ones that I spent the most time in. And at the end of the day, I hope this video was entertaining for you and informative of what the show was about. And I hope that you attend the show next year and I'll say hello. So that's pretty much it for me and I'll see you guys on the next one.